Before you take your seat, can we just turn our Bibles to the book of Jeremiah chapter 1? Just before we take our seat. Jeremiah chapter 1, reading from verse 1 through to 10. Then the words of Jeremiah, the son of Elkiah, one of the priests who were in Anathet, in the land of Benjamin, to whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, in the thirteenth year of his reign. It came also in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, and until the end of the eleventh year of Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, until the captivity of Jerusalem in the fifth month. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, behold, I do not know how to speak, for I am only a youth. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am only a youth. For to all to whom I send you, you shall go. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. Ten and last. See, I have set you this day over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to break down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. Can we give God a praise? Hallelujah. You may be seated. Good morning, brothers and sisters. It's always a privilege to be in the house of God. Let me first acknowledge today's moderator, Brother Fitzroy Black, as well as I acknowledge my pastor, my bishop, Bishop Dr. Hedlam, and all the ministers that are here, to all our members, visiting friends, and those who are viewing on the various social media platform. I bring you greetings this morning. Hallelujah. We worship on our theme for this month, youths embracing and uplifting and nurturing, inspiring and transformational environment. Before I go any further, let me recognize some persons that are here uh, this morning. I can never leave out my parents, my mother. I hope she just not just stepped in. But she's here. She can give a wave. Hallelujah. My father is here as well. It's good to have him here. He can give a wave. Hallelujah. My neighbor, friend from my community, just give a wave, Brandon Davis. And we have Alex as well. We have our Vernies Denton. Please stand. She's from the Naga Head Church. She's the youth director there. Praise God. And we have the Warrens. Please stand. We have Mrs. Warren and Romeo Warren. Hallelujah. God bless you all. I want to focus on a theme this morning. A call to unite. A call to unite, but I want to focus specifically on the call. There are three points that I want to, you know, share within this sermon. That is the call of God, the call to holiness, and a call on a mission. A call of God, a call to holiness, and a call on a mission. I want to thank Pastor for trusting me to be before this podium and sharing the word on the Sunday morning. It's not something easy, but by grace, I am here standing and I want to preach only what God wants the church to hear this morning. Let us focus on the call. The New Testament word for call is not a technical term. It is meant to invite or to summon a person to come. 
Brothers and sisters, if there is a leakage within the house, or there is a pipe to be fixed or to be installed, we simply call for a plumber. If the lighting in our homes is malfunctioning, we call for an electrician. If our vehicles are experiencing a problem, we call for a mechanic. When our devices or our home devices are given problems, such as our fridges or our microwaves, uh, we call for a technician to solve the issues. If we have an health issue, we simply call for a doctor. If there is a fire, we call the fire brigade. If there is a shooting, we'll call for the police. If we need legal advice, we'll simply call for a lawyer. If we need a building to be constructed, we call for an architect. If there is an emergency, Sister Fisher, we simply dial 119, which is the emergency number. Brothers and sisters, there are various tasks and issues that we face on a day-to-day -day basis where we often call for a specific group of person to carry out the given task. Likewise, within the kingdom of God, there are some tasks that God will call a particular individual, hallelujah, to execute such tasks. He will call persons like Noah and how he called him to build an ark. He called Moses to lead the Israelites out of captivity. Hallelujah. He called judges like Deborah who would be a judge and a mother to the people of Israel. He called prophets such as Elijah, Elisha, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Zechariah, and there are all other prophets uh, that we can name here this morning. He called mighty men such as David, such as Joshua, such as Solomon and Nehemiah. When we read our scriptures, we see where the Lord would have called some group of persons. He called women like Esther and Mary. And when we, script, when we turn our pages in the Bible and we look in the New Testament, we see where God still call individuals. Hallelujah. Somebody praise God. Hallelujah. He called the 12 disciples, such as Matthew and Peter, John, Luke, and Andrew, who most of them were young individuals. Some were fishermen, some were doctors, but he called them nevertheless. He called great persecutor like Saul, who was now converted to Paul, and he called young ones like Timothy and taught him how to lead the church. There are others who he has called, but let me say to us this morning that the Lord is still calling individuals. He is still calling man and woman uh, to perform the duty uh, of the kingdom. Uh, it doesn't matter your status. Uh, God can still call you. Uh, he is a respecter of no one. Uh, whether you are tall or you're short. Uh, whether you are black or you're brown. Uh, God can still call you. Uh, whether you have been to university or not. Uh, God can still call you. Uh, bachelor's degree or not. Uh, God can still call you. Uh, educated or not. God can still call you. Grow up in a family or not, God can still call you. Whether you have one pair of shoes or you have many shoes, God can still call you. Hallelujah. Whether you can speak well or not, God can still call you. And He's still calling individuals. For I heard they said that many are called, but few are chosen. And I declare in this house this morning that God is calling a remnant. I am declaring that God is calling a people who can perform the task of the kingdom of God. Can we give God a praise? Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Brothers and sisters, this call of God uh, is not similar when the parents uh, would call you or your best friend uh, will WhatsApp call you or FaceTime you uh, to have a chit chat. No, uh, but this call, brothers and sisters, uh, it is a heavenly call. Uh, this call is the Lord calling you uh, out of something uh, and he's now calling you uh, into something. Uh, look at the prophet Isaiah. Uh, Isaiah had a vision uh, and Isaiah said uh, that it was in the year uh, that King Uzziah died. Uh, Isaiah said that I saw the Lord uh, high and lifted up. Uh, Isaiah said that woe is me. Uh, what Isaiah saw uh, was his sin. Uh, what Isaiah saw uh, was his mess uh, because he recognized uh, that there was a holy God before him. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, and Isaiah repented uh, and he said that the angel uh, took a life coal uh, placed on his lips. Uh, that was the cleansing sister Fisher. Uh, that was the purging. Uh, and Isaiah got a duty uh, and he performed that duty. Oh hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are a few characters that I want to look at this morning. But there is one specific one I want to focus on which is Jeremiah, because Jeremiah was called in a time which it was not an easy time in the land of Israel. Hallelujah. Uh, but the Lord called him nevertheless. Uh, but before I look at the character Jeremiah, let us look uh, at a young one by the name of Samuel. Uh, the Bible said that Samuel was in the room uh, where the Ark of the Covenant was minister fuller. Uh, and the Bible said, which says that he was where uh, the presence of God was. Uh, and he heard the voice. He heard Samuel. Uh, uh, and Samuel, all he knew was uh, to go to Eli. Uh, so he went to Eli and Eli Eli said, no, youngster, I did not call you. So Samuel went back to his room, but he heard his name again. He heard Samuel. He went back to Eli. Eli said, no, I did not call you. Went back to his room, but he heard his name again. He heard Samuel. Hallelujah. And he went back to Eli. Eli now perceived that the Lord was calling the young man. So Eli Eli said to Samuel, when you hear your name, you look up and you say, speak Lord, for thy servant hear it. Eli was the one who guided our God Samuel to the voice of God. In this generation, we need some Eli who will guide our young people to the voice of God. Because we're living in a world where young people have lost their identity and they're looking their identity in influencers, uh, in secular artists. Uh, whatever they do, uh, they do. Uh, how they dress, uh, they dress. Uh, what they say, uh, they say. Uh, but we need uh, some Eli's, uh, some spiritual fathers, uh, some spiritual mothers uh, who will take the young ones uh, by the hands uh, and teach them uh, the way of the Lord, uh, who will teach them uh, the voice of God, uh, who will say come to church, uh, hallelujah, uh, who will cause them to be influenced hallelujah I thank God for the persons uh, who I came in encounter with growing up uh, as a child uh, and growing up in the ministry uh, because sometimes uh, they will just pull me aside uh, and they will say brother Javon uh, hallelujah walk holy uh, they will say brother Javon uh, be sold out for Christ uh, they will say brother Javon uh, do not soil uh, your garment amen sister Fisher uh, oh we need some spiritual fathers uh, in the the church of God, huh? spiritual mothers huh? who will not just walk past our young people huh? but who will grab a hold on them huh? and mentor them. <laughs> Hallelujah! Oh, I feel God in the house this morning. Thank you, Jesus. In the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah, and he's writing it. He said that the word of the Lord came to him saying, before Jeremiah was formed in the womb, I knew you. Let me pause right there. Hallelujah. 
Because you see, sometimes us as young people, we feel as if we're going through some challenges where no one understands and nobody knows. Hallelujah. Parents may not know what I'm facing on the inside. Best friend may not know. You come to church, shoot directors may not know. Pastor may not know. But I want to tell a young person that your creator who made heaven and earth, the one who formed you in the womb, he knows everything about you. Don't walk around like no one knows you. You have a father who is seated on high, who knows everything about you. He knows every detail. He knows the thorns on your head. He knows everything. He knows your mistake. He knows where you are. You're in the valley. He knows that you're there. You're crying at night. He knows that you're there. Your father knows you. Church of God, Jesus knows you. Hallelujah, brothers and Sister, God knows you. He knows every difficulties. He knows every challenges. He knows every heartache. He knows every struggle. He knows everything about you. Hallelujah. Your father knows you. Hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God. Ha, hallelujah. Ha, he said, Jeremiah, ha, I knew you ha, before your, per your parents ha, even planned to have you. Ha. You see, sometimes we think ha, that we are a mistake. Ha, but I want to declare ha, that the devil is a liar. Ha. You are not a mistake. Ha. Hallelujah. Ha. For I heard the word of God say, ha, hallelujah, that the children ha, are an heritage ha, unto the Lord. Help me this morning. Ha, the fruit of thy womb ha, is a reward ha, hallelujah ha, you're not a mistake ha, I wish I had some believers this morning ha, who have pulled on the lies of the enemy ha, hallelujah that will cause you to believe ha, that you're a mistake ha, that you have no purpose ha, that you're just here ha, hallelujah somebody worship God in the house Ooh, hallelujah hallelujah He went on and said, before you, Jeremiah, were born, I consecrated you. Other translations will say, I sanctified you. That word sanctification, Fitzroy, means that he had set you apart. He had made you different from the others. So what others do, you cannot do. That is what he's saying to Jeremiah. I have made you different, which leads me to my next point. A call to holiness. Can we praise the Lord? Romans 12 declares do not conform to the patterns of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind you are made to be different you're designed to be different you're programmed to be different you can't say what others say you can't choose how others choose you can't sing like how others sing you are made different believers he said that I have paid you separated uh, from the world uh, which means uh, there is a barrier uh, between you uh, and the enemy uh, there is a barrier uh, between the world uh, and the kingdom of God uh, there is a barrier uh, and I hear the Holy Ghost saying uh, don't cross the borders uh, don't cross the barriers uh, stay in Christ uh, stay in the kingdom of God uh, be ye holy uh, for he is holy uh, don't cross the borders for there is danger on the other side. Am I preaching to a church this morning? Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I know, hallelujah. It gets difficult at times because we're in a world where there is impurity. We're in a world where there is perversion. We're in a world where there is sexual immorality all around us. They're on our screens. They're in our schools. They're on our streets. But hear the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Don't conform to the pattern of this world. Resist the devil. Resist evil. Resist the flesh. 
2 Corinthians 6 verse 17 declares wherefore come out from among them and be he separate said the Lord touch not the unclean things and I will receive you hallelujah the word of God also declares that if any man who wish to come after Christ he must first deny himself he must take up his cross and follow Christ hallelujah you must deny yourself what does it mean to deny yourself it's not saying deny hallelujah yourself in particular but deny the things that do not glorify God oh hallelujah deny the patterns of this world deny the dance of this world deny the things of this world deny your selfish purposes deny the lying and the stealing and the fornication and the sexual immorality and the uncleanness and the witchcraft deny those things run from it put a barrier between you and it don't take on the things of this world the dressing of this world the music of this world deny it reject it the word of God says reject the devil hallelujah he said resist the devil and he shall flee from you I speak over this congregation the grace to resist the grace to deny hallelujah in an easier time brother Fitzroy but Jesus said to Paul that my grace is sufficient to keep you I hear the word of God declaring hallelujah that you're more than a conqueror you have strength and the strength doesn't come from man your strength doesn't come from vitamins it comes from the Lord look up to God when you're weak when you're battered down when you oh God want to give in when you want to cross the border look up to God God I need help Lord I need grace I don't want to sin I need grace I don't want to be a feminine man I need grace I don't want to fornicate I need grace Lord give us grace give young people grace give young man grace give young woman grace we need grace it's challenging it's rough but grace grace we need grace grace in the house hallelujah 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 Somebody give God a praise in the house. Amen. Hallelujah. Who he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow him. The Greek word deny means to utterly separate completely disowned from something this is the word of Jesus used for Peter's denial of him believers are to deny themselves of selfish purposes the self to which Jesus refers here is not the person but the personal goals the idea is that the disciple is to put himself on the line for the Lord hallelujah Paul wrote a letter to the Galatians he said walk in the spirit that you may not fulfill the lust of the flesh I love Paul's letter because he highlighted the various things of the flesh the malice the hate the strife the murder the envy hallelujah but he said in order to, to 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 reject the flesh you have to do one thing by walking in the spirit by walking in holiness by walking in righteousness how can a young man cleanse his ways by taking heed to the word of God 
what will help us brothers and sisters in this dark age and in this evil time is the word of God for Paul said that you must put on the whole armor of God the breastplate of righteousness the helmet of salvation he said guard your waist with truth and shut your feet with the preparation of the gospel and he said take up the shield of faith oh hallelujah to quench the fiery darts of this evil time the darts of sickness the darts of failure the darts of depression the darts of confusion take up the shield and quench those fiery darts but I've said it before and I'll say it again all of those are defensive weapons so you're backed up in a corner but there is a weapon that you can now go on the offensive and it is the word of God hallelujah the word of God according to the Hebrew writer that is sharper than any two edged sword this is what will help you to walk in the spirit by reading it day and night by taking heed to the word of God or oh, where the word said oh God you must present your bodies as a living sacrifice this is what will help you might not just be a reader of the word but being a doer of the word the word of God that says be ye holy for I am holy the word of God that declares that you must resist the devil and he shall flee from you this is what will help us to live a victorious life by reading the word meditating on the word praying over the word but most of all activating the word so when the flesh rise you take up the word and you speak the written words look at Jesus when he was in the wilderness and the devil tempted him he said it is written there is a written word brothers and sisters that you can use to conquer the devil somebody shout a hallelujah hallelujah young people are very adventurous we want to explore many things and we want to explore many things of how we look hallelujah we want different styles and different fashions but be mindful brothers and sisters I'm not telling you how to dress or how to look or how to sound but what I am telling you ensure that whatever you do it glorifies the almighty God hallelujah that is why he sent the Holy Spirit that when you do something the Holy Spirit can prick your heart and say no a call to walk in holiness my final point hallelujah called on a mission somebody say called on a mission there is a mission of God and we see in the Bible that there are various things where the Lord would call an individual. Look at Moses. The Israelites were in captivity in Egypt. And he called Moses to deliver the children of Israel out of captivity. Look at Noah, where the people were sitting and the Lord wanted to do something new. So he called Noah. He said, build me an ark. Hallelujah. And preach a message to the people. Look at Jeremiah. There was idolatry in the land. There was sin in the land. And he called a young man like Jeremiah to confront the idolatry that was in the land of Israel. Hallelujah. And he had to equip uh, Jeremiah. You see, when the Lord calls you, uh, the first thing he does is call you out of sin. Uh, that is why he sent his son uh, to die on a cross. Uh, hallelujah. Where you can repent uh, of your sin. Uh, after he calls you out of sin, uh, he now, oh God, sanctifies you. Uh, and he now anoints you. Uh, look at David, uh, who was in the field. 
field but the anointing was looking for him that when Jesse's son came out the oil could not flow but as soon as David came the anointing came down and the Lord anointed him in this generation in this dispensation what our young people need is the anointing of God for Isaiah said it that the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing you may be yoked you may be imprisoned you may be struggling but there is an anointing that is looking for you hallelujah you're in the bed of fornication but there is an anointing that is looking for you you're struggling with all kinds of sin but there is an anointing that is looking for you respecting of your age the anointing is looking for you no matter you what we have done the anointing is looking for you David was not the right fit as a description for a king but the anointing was looking for him I declare the anointing in this generation I declare the power of the Holy Ghost in this generation he said apostles do not leave for I am going to send you another comforter because apostles you are called on a mission but this mission your degree can't do it your intellect cannot do it people who you know cannot do it but what will carry out the mission and the mandate of God to reconcile this world to bring down principalities to bind up all kinds of demons to bind up all kinds of things to declare revival in communities what will take is the anointing of God want to send the anointing to our young people anoint us again God anoint us again God anoint us again God we're fighting but anoint us we're in the battle but anoint us we're in the cave but anoint us anoint us again we're in school but anoint us we need the anointing for homosexuality is across the nation we need Oh, we need the anointing. <laughs> We need the anointing. Oh, I heard the songwriter declares, I need the anointing. I need it way down in my soul. For the harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few. He said, I am willing to work, but give me the anointing. The anointing to preach. The anointing to cast out demons and devils. The anointing to pray. Give me the anointing. The anointing for university. Give me the anointing. The anointing for the mission of God.